Good morning. My name is Flo Brown and I am a lifetime harness racing trainer driver. Uh, about five or six years ago, I kind of started going into carriage driving, retraining standard breads for pleasure driving. And that involves the breast collar with the long traces and breaching and tie down. Pretty much the way we used to hook our horses up until we switched to the quick hitch about 25 years ago. So for 25 years, I've been driving with a quick hitch. And it's, it's really apparent the difference between the two hitches when you have a horse that starts giving you a hard time. Quick hitch keeps you a lot more secure. I have never had a, what I call a rut row moment as my horse is bucking and kicking and bolting down the track. Um, like I have had a couple times with the carriage driving hookup because with the breaching preventing the, the cart from going forward and the traces preventing the cart from sliding backwards, you, if you don't have them hooked exactly just right, you, you've got a lot of forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, which spooks the horse and only makes the situation a whole lot worse. With a quick hitch, the cart stays secure. Never had to worry about it coming loose. Now, unfortunately, the quick hitch is not allowed in the show ring. So my idea is to combine the two, make like a hybrid hitch. And I made a little video to show the difference between the two hitches and how I would modify it. So this is the kind of harness that I currently have, and I don't really like it, but it came with the cart. But you can see it has a long, here's the tug, has a long strap, goes down and attaches directly to the undergirth. And my understanding is this kind of hook allows the shaft to float up and down. And I'm not really sure why you would want that. Um, if something goes wrong, like it did for me the other day, she kind of got a little silly and started bucking and bouncing around and my breaching broke. Now I did have it hooked a different way, so came out okay, but if I had just been hooked like this, that cart would have rode forward, the shafts, I was trying to swing her head from left to right to keep her off balance, that shaft would have rode forward, started poking her in the neck. Would have turned into a really bad situation. Fortunately, because I, she's a small horse and I have some excess leather, this is how I do it. I wrap it around the girth, lock it down through and down, and that's what saved me. Kept the cart from riding too far forward. Now one of my ideas, see in our old kind of harnesses where we had all this hooking, we didn't use breaching to race. What we had were thimbles that attached up in here somewhere and came straight down, slotted over the end of the shaft. Okay, and held the shaft from riding forward too much. Um, so I wouldn't mind having some thimbles on this harness, and I may look into getting some. These are the attachments on the end of the shaft, which you're going to slot into, and this one happens to have two, which is nice. You can hook them further out if you need to. <clears throat> So this would be the racehorse harness, okay? It's old and beat up. <clears throat> this would be your quick hitch, okay? You have slots in the shaft that are gonna go in there and it's kept from sliding backwards with a Buxton Martingale. And then just to be super safe, if I was trail driving or you know, up and down hills, I would have a tie down girth. Come up, wrap around, wrap around, back. So now you're tied in. You got quick, you're quick hitched in and you're also tied in. And there's nothing that says you couldn't have a regular breast collar and traces going back. You know, I mean, this could certainly be adapted, made into like a hybrid hookup. So you see, the end of the shaft is way back here. And this would be my idea. You could have like a thimble type of a thing, a hold them back that would attach up here somewhere, come down, and then you could wrap it and use this front attachment to secure it, or even this front attachment to secure it. So it would act like a thimble. And you could use it with a breaching or without and then the other thing that I'd like to make note of is we have a separate 
cavison. We call it a race halter. These attachments here are for racing equipment called a head pole. Um, but it's a separate, it's, it's not the nose band that's attached around with the bridle, okay? We add just these little nose straps. They only go around the front. Okay, they don't go all the way around the face. That keeps the, oops, that keeps the, um, the blinders from gapping, from gapping and wobbling around. Okay, but I prefer them. And like I said, the bridle is separate from the race halter. So you can put the race halter on first, underneath the halter, take your halter off, and then put your bridle on. If you have a horse, that's a little bit hard to bridle. Plus the fact that with those rings on each side, you can hook them up to cross ties. I use the race halter slash cavison on my riding bridles for that reason. If I forget something, I forgot my sunglasses, I forgot my phone, whatever, I can simply cross tie my horse up and go get it. So here, watch this, okay? She's on the cross ties, hooked to the race halter slash cavison. All I have to do is take the halter Take the bridle off. Let go to bed, huh? Let go. And she's still tied up. So now I put the regular stall halter on over top of the cavison. I've taken the snaps off of these rings, put it on the halter ring. I've already unbuckled it in the back. And I take my cavison off. So at no time has my horse been loose with nothing on their head. That can come in real handy when you're out and about at a horse show or out somewhere trail driving and hooking up.